Welcome back to Stand with Kelly and Nikki Chewbacca. We've been talking about Facing the Beast, a new book by Naomi Wolf, which, by the way, Nikki Chewbacca, would be a fantastic Christmas gift if you're thinking about what to get me, because I know it must be hard to think about what to get me for Christmas. (laughs) The wife who has everything. Your subtlety always, always (laughs) surprises me. I, I don't think I've ever been called subtle. Um, <laughs> so we'll have to put that one down in the book. But Christmas is right around the corner, um, holiday season. And this is a time for Christmas traditions and Christmas holidays. And I remember when we got married, we had um, an opportunity to create our own traditions because we came from family backgrounds with very different Christmas traditions. And so we're looking forward to another, oh gosh, are we coming up on like 23 years of Christmases together? Yep. That's amazing. Uh, one of my favorite as a married couple, we had a couple Christmases before that, a couple, a couple awkward dating Christmases, Mm -hmm. some long distance. Uh, so one of my favorite Christmas traditions that we do is root beer floats on Christmas morning. So the kids know that before we have breakfast, before we dig into all the presents under the tree, they can always count on root beer floats on Christmas morning. And so um, it's my job to get up before the kids and to get out the ice cream so it's not rock hard. <laughs> and the different flavors of root beer, because people are, they have their their preferences, the root beer preferences, and set up essentially like a an ice cream bar and have the cups out and the markers out so people don't mix up their cups because there's a lot of cups running around our house on Christmas day and everybody gets their root beer floats before we start Christmas morning. And so that's a, a little Chewbacca tradition that is really fun that we'll have to make sure to carry out this year. Um, Christmas in our house goes on for at least one full day, sometimes multiple. So what do you love about Christmas at our house? <laughs> well, I, I love the root beer float tradition. I think it's kind of funny that for the most part, I've never gotten to enjoy it because you say, guys do it so you get, early. By the time you get up, the root beer is gone. <laughs> I know. It's like the kids are up at 5.30, 6 in the morning, ready to go. And I'm like, yeah, I'll saunter down around 9.30 <laughs> or 10. And already the root beer floats have been consumed. The ice cream's been eaten. <laughs> or Sugar melted. Sugar levels are through the roof. And people That's are right. bouncing off the walls, ready to tear open the Christmas presents. You know, I think... Uh, I'm thinking back to my my own family traditions before we got married growing up. Uh, I really loved how my folks would always try to find ways to host people uh, Mm. during the Christmas holidays. We would often have some sort of event or a dinner or something during the holiday season just to uh, remember together uh, what we were celebrating. Mom would often, she's a concert pianist by training, and so she would play Christmas carols and get everybody together to do that. And so um, there's something heartwarming for me uh, from that tradition. Another tradition uh, my folks started, which as a young kid, I didn't fully appreciate, I'll have to say that, but it really made a difference in my outlook on the world and and how I came to really appreciate Christmas uh, for its deeper meaning, which was uh, there were times where my parents just said, we're not going to have as many presents this Christmas. And the money that we would put towards getting presents for you guys, some of that money or all of that money or most of that money, depending on the Christmas, we're going to instead choose to give to those who are less fortunate and we'll make those decisions together as a family. And so um, that wasn't always easy as a, you know, a young teenager or preteen to be like, really? What? I'm not going to get my Nintendo game. Uh I just dated myself or some of our younger <laughs> audience, but um, but it made a difference and and reminded me that uh, what we celebrate as we're moving into this season is that um, God sent His Son to um, as a gift to us, and it was in the midst of uh, a crisis, right? A political mm-hmm. crisis, spiritual crisis, civilizational tensions. Um, which we're kind of in the midst of today, right? And uh, he came to bring peace, and mm-hmm. he came to bring hope, and he came to bring love, and he came to bring uh, unity. And so as we go into this Christmas season, that's one of the things that I'm I'm thinking about is just in the midst of all the turmoil and all the difficulties and all the challenges and all the trials and all the conflict and uh, some of the things that we were talking about with uh, Naomi, uh, there is hope. And there can be peace in the midst of the storm. And there can be bridge building. There can be forgiveness. And she talked about that too, you know, about her 
uh, choosing to forgive the people who had mm -hmm. wronged her. Uh, that is part of rebuilding, you know, the unity that um, the last couple of years have really uh, compromised. Sure, true to wait up. Yeah, I really like that. That's part of your your Christmas story, and you've carried that into our family too. So every holiday season, we as a family make a point to do some kind of giving or serving opportunity around the holiday so that the kids know it's not just about us and doing things that are fun for our family, but for them too. So for Thanksgiving, we do some kind of a serving project. This Thanksgiving, it was helping to feed homeless. For Christmas, we'll do something as well, whether it's giving or serving. But I love that that's a family tradition that you've carried forward for us. Uh, one of our family traditions is my mom collected Christmas ornaments, and my godmother would always make a Christmas ornament for me every year. So I have um, Christmas ornaments throughout all my childhood. And so then I know that you love this. I carry that forward, <laughs> and we make Christmas ornaments every year, and then the kids really get into it and have made multiple Christmas ornaments. And so then we have uh, a way too many Christmas ornaments <laughs> for one tree, and we love collecting Christmas ornaments and making Christmas ornaments. But what I look forward to is as the kids grow up and leave, um, they will take their set of Christmas ornaments with them and they'll have a whole set that they've made from the time they were like infants all the way through their high school years of Christmas ornaments through the seasons and Christmas ornaments that I've made them too. And so the homemade Christmas ornament tradition is a, is a memorable one as well that we love to do. Um, at, at Christmas time, so yeah, and it's a beautiful thing too because every one of them is a memory. That's right. right. I don't have your memory, so I don't always remember what a particular ornament is supposed to remind me of, right. unless it's very clear, like Disney World two two thousand and eight. <laughs> oh, I know what that one's about, right? <laughs> um, but I love how you can look at our Christmas tree, and you can tell a story mm -hmm. for each ornament that's on there. Um, and in, so in, in a lot of ways, it's the Christmas trees are the stories of our mm -hmm. lives as a family. That's you know, true. That we get to celebrate each Christmas and um, they represent the gift uh, that God has given us in each other and in the memories that we've shared mm -hmm. uh, as a family through difficult times, through times of tragedy, through times of triumph. Um, they're all right there in front of us. Right. And as we sip our eggnog or whatnot, we can celebrate that, wow, look what God has brought us through. And um, as always, this Christmas is a reminder that there's hope mm -hmm. for us, for the world, um, and for the future. Yeah, that's good. We collect Christmas ornaments. And by we, I mean I. We've got to just yep. be honest. But yep. you you fortunately indulge me in that habit. You're really thoughtful. I'll buy one for you, you every once in a while. You too, do. Right? And sometimes more than once in a while, which I really appreciate. Um, but we get them on trips or, like you said, um, at different memories. So I just did a college trip with one of our kids this year. And I picked up an ornament at the school that uh, he preferred least <laughs> so that it would always be an inside joke. Um, but to your point, when we put those Christmas ornaments up, they're not only stories, but they're they're objects of gratitude. So to mm -hmm. thank God for friends who know this about us and they get us ornaments. Um, for There's pictures of the kids through different stages in their life or through different things that happen, like broken bones. <laughs> mm -hmm. And so um, just gratitude to, to God for what he's done and the story that he's weaving together, where we've been, where he's brought us to, the, all these memories that we've had. And the, the tree becomes a bit of like a family scrapbook, but remembering the reason for the season that we're not just here for um, great meal and family time and a, a point of presence. Uh, we're here to remember that the greatest gift of all is that God loved the world so much he gave us his only son, that we wouldn't be living alone and under his wrath, but that we'd be reconciled to him so that anyone who believes um, would become a child of God. And that's what we're celebrating. Like the greatest sacrifice of all is a God who loved us so much that he gave up his position on his throne to come down here and born in the most humble circumstance on this birthday that we celebrate in December in order to become one of us that we could uh, become co-heirs with Christ, that we could become a child of God. And that's a really big privilege and, and a point to be really grateful for and to be um I think in, to remember in solemn humility at Christmas time. And so uh, part of that is that there is a gift that's given like all the time. Like the gift of Jesus 
it would be enough. But part of what the ornaments do is remind us of all the gifts and all the blessings that God gives us. And to not forget, because it says that in the Bible, to set up stones of remembrance. Mm -hmm. uh, well, we don't live this nomadic life of wandering through, you know, the Middle East. But I do have a nomadic Christmas tree, if you will, that takes us through the journey of our of our life together. Well, more than one. Let's 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 be honest. Okay, now. so we're but up to we, a few Christmas trees. <laughs> right. We have so many ornaments. We need we needed more Christmas trees. Well, as we wrap up uh, today, we just want to wish our audience, all of you, our listeners and viewers, the merriest of Christmases. May you experience God's hope. May you experience joy peace, love uh, of family and friends. May you be encouraged, remembering that uh, there's hope for tomorrow. Uh, and that's what Christmas reminds us of, that God sent us a sure and certain hope in his son. And so Merry Christmas to all. This is Stand with Kelly and Nikki Chewbacca. Be sure to subscribe. We will see you next week. Have a wonderful week. Stand firm and stand strong.